today, Michael. How are you? Good, good. I know that I only have 12 minutes, so I'll try to get it all we in We usually there. do run long. I will r- wrap up at two, um, but we if we run a little long, that's okay. Okay, cool. At least from my perspective. So I guess I'll give a little bit of background for me. Um, I'm a civil engineer. Uh, EIT started off as a support specialist at Autodesk, um, and I used to get a bunch of questions, a bunch of support tickets asking, all right, why is my Revit model not coming into the right location civil and why can I get my civil line work to show up uh, in Revit? And we're really good in our support team. Like the civil folks know their stuff, the Revit stuff know their stuff. They also know Navisworks, but they weren't great at talking to each other. Uh, As Marissa and Nick (laughs) mentioned, we need to talk to each other. So I decided, hey, we have this great tool and our documentation isn't that great. Um, So I had the idea, hey, I'm going to, write some information out, write the steps, kind of get down into it and figure out the workflow and how uh, this shared reference point tool actually works. So I think you actually shared um, the kind of where to get it. So I'm going to be able to skip through some of my PowerPoint. Um, I'm going to put a link in the Zoom group chat. It's the data sets that I'm using. So if anybody wants to try this out, um, on their own, feel free to download it um, and yeah, follow follow along. Um, so let me start off here with Civil. Um, I'm really glad that Alex mentioned the grids. Um, I taught this class at AU two years. Uh, my first year, I would not rely on a grid and my elevations would come in wrong. So, Yeah, I have a grid now. And the best way to think about this is you need to be able to select two points. Select two points in Civil that you can then select in Revit. And those two points is how the two pieces, you know, the two softwares are going to interact and talk to each other and kind of handle this this exchange. So before I would do this top corner, now I rely on a nice little grid. Um, This is Civil. The functionality hasn't changed all that much through the years. So I think we've had the shared reference point tool around since I think 2014. But once you get it installed, uh, you do have to install it in each of the programs. So there's a separate civil installation and a separate Revit one. Uh, The tool lives in your toolbox under subscription extension manager, address reference point tool. And right over here, export shared reference points for, it's kind of cut off, it's down here. But when you select it, uh, it doesn't seem like it does much. It's just telling you, all right, pick a point. You pick a point. So since I'm using a grid, I'm going to select one of the points on my grid. And then the next like little you know, toggle down here is telling you, select a point on plus y axis quasi north. Really confusing. Um, I couldn't figure out what it was actually asking me for. I would select a bunch of separate points. And sometimes it doesn't take the information in. Basically, it's just telling you to select another point. The trick here is to make sure that the point is at the right elevation, at the same elevation as your first point. That's why a lot of folks will run into this and instantly drop the tool because it's like, oh, it's not working. Pick the first point. The second point that you're picking has to be at the same elevation. So since it's a grid, it's all flat for me. It's all at elevation zero. I'm going to select any of the other points. I'm going to just pick this one. It's just a habit. Um, I think Nick mentioned it. Um, basically, what the tool does is it writes out this X, Y, Z information and then the rotation for your X, Y plane. So you will get an XML file uh, that Civil writes out for you know, the location of your, your line work here. So one of the things to note, I think somebody asked if units are important. Units are extremely important. Uh, I actually use meters because the building that I'm using is the Autodesk Research Center in Toronto. So it's a metric uh, coordinate system. So it's in meters. Uh, Somebody asked for feet. It will work in feet if your coordinate system is set up for feet. There was one question on there that was very interesting that I wanted to bring to the group. If feet versus US survey feet matters. I don't think so personally, because in the Revit model, the US survey feet, like their model is not big enough that US survey feet will really matter. But I'm getting funny looks from folks, so we we can talk about that in a little bit. So meters, I'm going to press OK. Uh, It's going to write out um, 
an XML file. Uh, let's see. Uh, I did bitmxt. I did a copy for a, a dry run that I did earlier. So bitmxt, uh, file name, my shared reference point. I'm going to save this. And for now, I'm going to leave Civil alone. Head over to Revit. So this is our beautiful building. Nice little Revit model here. Going to go over to my floor plan. Again, I'm actually a Civil guy, Civil 3D and Infoworks. So I play around in Revit. I don't really know too much about Revit uh, besides doing enough to get me in danger sometimes. But Nice thing here, um, let's isolate the grid just so I don't select anything that I don't mean to. So I'm going to isolate this category. Uh, if zoom would go away, that'd be great. And duh, duh, duh. well, the tool's up here. It's under add ins. If you go to add ins, import shared coordinates from XML file. This is the shared reference point tool on the Revit side. So I'm going to click here. What it's going to do is it's going to kind of ask me to do the same thing that I did in the civil side. So select the same two points. So I did A1, 109. And then I did this guy down here, so the C2Y, 301. And now what it's going to ask me for is an XML file. So the XML file that I created previously, this my shared reference points, click on it. It's going to ask you if you want to create a new a shared coordinate called my shared reference point. Click yes. Successfully created. I'm going to end my isolation. Everything looks great so far. Now, this is the confusing part because if people think, okay, I'm here, I'm done. Uh, there's nothing else that needs to get done. Um, my two models are linked. You actually have to go under manage location and set the site because what it's going to do is it's going to stay at the same uh, internal that default site it's going to create the new my shared ref ref point site but it's not actually going to make it current so when you make it current now we're actually using that information that we got from our civil 3d drawing one of the quick tests that i like to do by the way for anybody that noticed um, that Oh boy, this is where my Revit IQ is, is lacking. The project base point went away. Not that it went away, it moved um, just to have that information, but these project base point is still here. And it kind of filled in this information automatically for us based off of the information that was in that XML. One of the nice checks that I like to do is for the orientation, I like to just set it to true north just to make sure that my building is orienting the way that I you know, want it to. So just click apply and it looks pretty good. It, you can see that it tilts. Um, I see a lot of times on the support side, I used to at least, uh, if you pick the points in the, you know, instead of picking point one and two, then point, pick two, point two and one, it flips and mirrors everything. So that's why I just like to do this little test. So looking good and from here now basically you've set it up so you can start to send data back and forth between Revit and Civil 3D. So I'm going to go to my 3D model. I'm going to export this and the reason I'm doing this is because there are some settings that you need to tweak. So DWG export, click over here. The big ones you want to go to units and coordinates. Uh, it will always default to this um, it'll default to inches and internal origin. For us, we know that we're in Canada or supposedly in Canada for this project. So going to go to meters. And for the coordinate base, you want to use shared coordinates. Press OK. Click Next. And I'm going to leave this alone. And it's going to now export my Revit model into a, a DWG. I wonder if that could be something you could manipulate with the I and I, the unit export or something along those lines, like your background settings. It's saved with the template. Yeah. So if you change it with your template, you can have multiple DWG exports. Um, Just save it as only, a style, I suppose. Yeah, the only issue that um, 
the other uh, I don't want to say issue. The only, the other solution you have is you can also use a Navisworks file, uh, which you is a little use... bit sh smaller on the AutoCAD side of things, as Correct. far as uh, working with it. So, because um, DWGs and Navisworks files are the only files that you can export from Revit and use shared coordinates. Everything else exports with project coordinates or internal coordinates. Yep. In, in Revit, Michael, can you show yep. us where the survey point went to? Maybe the, the zoom extents? It went really far away. <laughs> Let's go. Uh, zoom. No, it's not going to be zoom out. Uh, is it? Yes. Again, Z. So yeah, with that, it's the like survey way down here. going to remain at zero, zero. Uh, so mm -hmm. that's why it jumps. Because it's actually, it's not a jump. It's everything moves except the survey point uh, out in the space. If you unclip the survey point before you do that, at least when you're specifying coordinates of point, it'll keep the survey point where the project base point is. Um, and I would imagine it would do the same thing here it, with the method that you're showing, is if you unclip the survey point before you change the systems, the survey point will stay. But the survey point isn't a origin, so it's just a reference point. So is this point technically too far away? Like when I open up the file, am I going to get the pop-up? It's not. It's just uh, when you do zoom extents, you're going to have a big It's going to be way out there. Yeah. And I think, yes, Joshua, this, in this scenario, the survey point stayed and everything else it's moved. Way out there. Right, Alex? No, the internal origin, if he turns the internal origin on, it should be at the project base point. Uh, Revit knowledge. <laughs> it's not all there. Uh, hit, hit VV. And then scroll down until you get the site. Also, Open we shared up. in the comments, the yeah. internal origin, especially if you're upgrading your templates, upgrading your Revit models, this is now visible everywhere, that internal origin. There are some resources that Autodesk has provided in ways to share that uh, or to turn that off through Dynamo. So before we wrap up with a few final thoughts, Thank you so much to our presenters, Nick, Marissa, Alex, Michael, for presenting today. I'm, I really hope, I know I have, everybody has benefited from the discussion today. It is recorded. I know this is definitely one that I'm going to have to watch back and, and slowly maybe like rewind certain portions or what have you. We can find that hopefully within a few days on our LinkedIn group. Uh, Alice and Uza has shared the link to that within the chat. If you do not have that, and of course, you can just search for the BIM XT Network group on LinkedIn. So please feel free to, to get on there, provide your chat, provide your insight. Thank you for everybody who has done that today uh, within our chat. So any last thoughts, everybody? Alex, Nick, Michael. There was one uh, question that came out talking about architectural model being done well in advance of civil. That's always the case. It pretty much always is. Um, so it's not a worry, uh, continue working in that instance, you would use origin, origin to link all your models around, uh, but then you can always set up the share coordinates afterwards. So uh, using the site model or using that uh, SharePoint tool, uh, both will work at the end. It That's still actually goes almost once you the... set it up, just don't move it. <laughs> right? Yeah, I wouldn't move it unless you absolutely have to. Um, like suddenly you decide to put the building because you found something underground that you didn't know was there. Um, uh, but yeah, what Alex said is what I, would, I was going to say is, if you don't know where your building lives, don't even argue with shared coordinates. Just link everything via internal origin point to start out with. And this kind of matches the way, you know, you were supposed to set things up in CAD, in a CAD environment, that everybody's... XYZ origin was in the same place, and so you would link based off of zero zero zero. Um, so it's it's kind of the same concept. And then once you know it, you can just say, "Hey, this building, the zero zero, is actually at this real world point." So, Michael, any final thoughts or comments that you have? Uh, no, this was great because the stuff that I didn't get to cover was covered by everybody else. So, <laughs> oh, this was perfect. Thank well, you for having me. I think me. that's like one of the things that makes this so confusing, especially for someone who's not a civil engineer, right, is everybody seems to do it differently. 
everybody yeah. has their own process of doing it. And then of course, as somebody mentioned, if it's set up after the Revit model, it's like a, you know, then you're really thrown in or, you know, like Nick was saying, if you're building moves, like, oh my gosh, what do I do? Who do I call? <laughs> Uh, yeah. One question came in, assuming the file is the site file the, the architect is using, how would the MEP engineer acquire coordinates from the file? Does Revit 21 allow files with multiple coordinates to be published from that file? Uh, yes, yeah, so using the site model, what you do, um, if you're in BIM 360, it matters uh, or not. If you're on a network, you can just publish out coordinates. To, you link in MEP, structural, architectural, and you can publish them out directly to each one of those models. Make sure everyone's out of the model before you do the publish. If you're in BIM 360, you have to go the opposite way around. I would have uh, acquired the grids, or actually, sorry, copy monitored the grids into the site model. That way I have something to link into or line up. So I'd, in my MEP model, uh, line up or bring in the site model and then acquire from that site model. That's how you do it in BIM 360. The same way that you would do the architects, right? Yes. MEP yep. wouldn't be different. No, yeah, MEP structural, um, they'd all be the same, link it in and then acquire. The only note for me is the workflow only really works in civil. So that plugin will only be available for civil 3D. Okay. 